There are about 3,000 North Korean soldiers at Russian training grounds near the Ukrainian border, and their number will continue to increase. In total, Pyongyang plans to send up to 12,000 soldiers to Russia. North Korea is interested in them gaining experience in modern combat operations, analysts explain. This poses a significant threat not only to Ukraine, but also to South Korea, which North Korea recognizes as a hostile state. This is why Kyiv and Seoul have decided to intensify their cooperation. We agreed to strengthen the exchange of intelligence and expertise, to intensify contacts at all levels, including at the highest level, to develop a strategy of action and a list of countermeasures in response to the escalation, and to involve joint partners in cooperation. As part of this agreement, Ukraine and the Republic of Korea will soon exchange delegations to coordinate action. Vladimir Zelensky, President of Ukraine and Telegram. Since the beginning of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, South Korea has been providing humanitarian and financial aid to Kyiv. The country has joined Western sanctions and imposed export restrictions on the Federation. However, as one of the world's largest arms exporters, Seoul has so far hesitated to supply weapons and equipment to Kyiv directly. However, after North Korea began sending not only weapons but also soldiers to Russia, South Korea's position may change. South Korea is considering whether to send weapons directly to Ukraine, reversing a policy banning lethal aid to the country at war. Seoul has previously backfilled the U.S. for shipments that it has made. From Bloomberg Publication. South Korea is among the top five countries in the world that are developing their defense industry most rapidly. Therefore, Seoul can provide Kyiv with significant amounts of military aid. But we must also take into the account the political situation in South Korea, where the country's parliament is in opposition to the president. The initiative to send serious military aid must go through parliament, which creates a problem. The majority there is a part of opposition to Buro Democratic Party, which firmly opposes the current administration which represents the right-wing Conservative People's Power Party. If South Korea does decide to send weapons, artillery shells could become part of the defense aid. The fact is that during the Cold War, the United States accumulated a significant stockpile of ammunition on the territory of the Republic, and in the 2000s they sold them to Seoul. Thus, hundreds of thousands of 155mm shells and 3,400,105mm shells ended up in South Korea's disposal. The peculiarity of the situation is that South Korea now has only K-105HT self-propelled howitzers, which are essentially improvised self-propelled howitzers on truck chassis. Since 2020, the South Korean army has announced plans to gradually transfer its K-105HTs to the reserves. Accordingly, this makes it possible to say that at least some of the 3.4 million 105mm shells are surplus to requirements for South Korea. Therefore, part of this ammunition could be spent on direct military assistance to the armed forces of Ukraine from Defense Express publication. In order to destroy the Russian and now North Korean contingent, the armed forces of Ukraine would benefit from long-range weapons from South Korea, military analysts say. In particular, the KTSSM-2 missiles are the South Korean equivalent of the Atakams. The Hunmu-2 family of ballistic missiles and Hunmu-3 land-based missiles. Reported by Anastasia Tarnavska, Valeriana Kapelova, UATV News.